Hello everyone. Today we will learn about chemical shift. Chemical shift is an important concept in NMR spectroscopy because it is the one which gives the value of the particular proton present in an organic molecule. Usually chemical shift is represented by the symbol delta. We all know that all nuclei in the molecules are surrounded by electron clouds. If there is any nucleus, the nucleus is surrounded by the revolving electrons. When you keep that nucleus in an external magnetic field, the circulating electron, it creates its own tiny magnetic field. This tiny magnetic field, I will call it as local magnetic field. When you place this local magnetic field against an applied magnetic field or outside magnetic field, they both will oppose because both are magnetic field, hence they will oppose each other. Hence, the effective field felt by the nucleus is smaller than the applied field. Usually, chemical shift, before we go for that, we have to deal with this equation which is given by H effective is equal to H applied minus H local where H represents magnetic field. The effective field felt by this nucleus, effective magnetic field felt by this nucleus is the difference of applied magnetic field and the local magnetic field. Once this nuclei are present in the molecules and they will be surrounded by the electron clouds, they mean to say that they are shielded, in other terms they are protected. We know that in a molecule there will be different kinds of nuclei and all these nuclei will have slightly different en electronic environment, hence the shielding will be to a greater extent. The degree of shielding depends upon the density of the circulating electrons. That means if there is less electron density, then they will have different shielding. If there is more electron density around the nucleus, there will be more shielding or de-shielding effect. In this context, now we can define chemical shift of a particular proton. Always we define chemical shift for a particular kind of proton because earlier we have seen that for every kind of nucleus, there will be different environment of the electronic, electronic field. Because there is different electronic environment, there will be a difference in the chemical shift. So how can we define chemical shift, that is delta? The difference in the absorption position of a particular proton from the absorption position of a reference proton is called the chemical shift. Always we define chemical shift for a particular proton, not in general we can define the chemical shift. So whenever we talk, we talk about the particular proton, or the chemical shift of a particular proton, always we have to deal with the context of a reference proton. What is that reference proton? We will see now. It means to say that nucleus which is present in same chemical environment will have the same chemical shift. If the nucleus is present in different chemical environment, it will have different chemical shifts. Then we will now move to the reference or standard that we were talking a little while ago. What is this reference or standard? Whenever we want to benchmark something, always we take a standard, always we take a reference. Here in NMR spectroscopy also, we make use of a reference standard. What is that reference standard? This reference standard is always the one which will have some commonalities. The universally accepted reference standard is tetramethylsilane. In short, we can represent it as TMS. T -M -S. So this chemical shift is always measured in terms of some reference group of nuclei. The structure of prime tetramethylsilane is as follows. There are four methyl groups, hence tetramethyl. They are all attached to silyl group and hence it is tetramethylsilane. When we are calling this tetramethylsilane as the universal standard, definitely it should have some advantages. We will see what these advantages are. The first one, it gives a very sharp and intense signal. It is chemically invert. It means to say that whenever you add the standard to the compound, it will not react with your compound as well as the solvent used. Since it is having a very low boiling point of 27 degrees Celsius, it can be easily evaporated at room temperature itself. It behaves isotropically in the magnetic field. It is soluble in most of the organic solvents that we use for the NMR spectroscopy. Moreover, it can be added in a very diluted solution, say 0.01 to 1% as an internal standard. We know that there are different kinds of spectroscopy and we will see what standards has to be used for what kind of spectroscopy. If you are using proton spectroscopy, proton NMR or carbothetin NMR, then you can use tetramethylsilane as the 
standard. If you want to run fluorine-19 NMR, then you have to use CFCL3 as the standard, trichlorofluoromethane. If you want to use phosphorus-31 NMR, if you want to scan, then you have to use phosphoric acid, orthophosphoric acid as the standard. If you want to go for nitrogen-15 NMR, then you have to go for nitromethane as the standard. If you want to scan oxygen-17 NMR, then you have to use water as the standard. We said that it gives an intern sharp single peak in the NMR spectrum. Now we will see how best we can represent TMS on an NMR spectrum. Before that, we have to learn what is an NMR spectrum. NMR spectrum is a graphical representation of chemical shift on the x-axis and intensity of signals on the y-axis. We can call this a peak or a signal henceforth. Always this TMS tetramethylsilane peak it will always appear at chemical shift zero and look at the intensity and the sharpness of the peak. Always it gives a single signal. Hence it is used as a reference standard. No other chemical shift value we can have for this TMS. Here for the representation purpose, we have used applied field strength on the x-axis. That means this side, it is low frequency side. So whenever there is a TMS peak, that means that side it is low frequency side as we move down then we go for the high frequency side this low frequency side is called by other terms namely high field up field shielded high field means there will be very very low frequency up field towards the tms peak shielded means it is more protected opposite of these three terms is for higher frequency side they are also called by three other terms just exactly opposite of this if this is high field, it will be low field. If it is up field, it is down field. If it is shielded and this side it is de-shielded. So these six terms are very, very important for us to learn the chemical shift and the succeeding chapters. So whenever I say high field, up field or shielded, that means they will have low chemical shift values. Whenever I use low field, down field or de-shielded, they will have higher chemical shift values. Then there should be a formula to express chemical shift or to calculate the chemical shift. Usually chemical shifts are expressed in dimensionless units that, that is they are independent of the applied field strength. This is the formula which is used to calculate the chemical shift. Chemical shift delta is equals to observed chemical shift number of hertz away from TMS divided by spectrometer frequency into 10 per 6. That means how many hertz the particular proton is away from the TMS that divided by the operating frequency of the NMR spectrometer multiplied by 10 raised to 6. We will solve this formula in a short while from now. Now let us take some examples and see how we can calculate the chemical shift in PPM. The first example being a peak at 60 hertz that is frequency of 60 away from TMS at an applied frequency of 60 megahertz. Applied frequency of 60 megahertz refers to spectrometer frequency. Now we know that chemical shift is equal to number of hertz away from TMS divided by spectrometer frequency into 10 raised to 6. So here mu, mu is away from TMS that is 60 divided by applied frequency it is 60 megahertz 60 into 10 raised to 6 because it is given in mega we have to express that 10 raised to 6 into 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6, 10 raised to 6 gets cancelled 60 over 60 is 1 ppm. So the peak will appear at the chemical shift of 1 ppm. Now let us see another example. A peak at an applied frequency of 100 megahertz observed at 100 hertz from TMS. So the operating frequency of the spectrometer is 100 megahertz and the peak has appeared at 100 hertz away from tetramethylsilane. So substituting all these in the formula above we get delta is equal to 100 over 100 into 10 raised to 6 into 10 raised to 6 these two gets cancelled, 100 over 100, it becomes 1 ppm. So the chemical shift of this particular peak is 1 ppm on the NMR spectrum. Now we have to understand at what operating frequency we have to run the NMR. Is there a standard value? Definitely not. You can have 60 megahertz, 100, 300, 400, 500 and 60 megahertz. Then what will be the chemical shift value if I operate at different operating frequency? You have to always remember that the chemical shift value remains the same irrespective of the instrument used. 
if it is 60 megahertz instrument or 600 megahertz instrument the chemical shift obtained will be one and the same that means we have taken an example here a delta value of 4.6 ppm obtained on 60 megahertz instrument will be the same even on 100 megahertz and even on 600 megahertz instrument so you keep varying the spectrometer frequency your chemical shift value does not alter at all we will see by taking an example suppose imagine there is a methyl proton which appeared at 162 hertz away from tms on 60 megahertz instrument the same methyl protons appeared at 270 hertz on a 100 megahertz instrument so now we will see what will be the delta value for this methyl protons at two different instruments operating at different frequency so we know that delta is equal to 160 hertz divided by 60 hertz it gives 2.7 ppm for the second spectrophotometer 270 hertz divided by 100 megahertz instrument again it is giving 2.7 ppm that means whatever may be the delta value whatever i'm sorry whatever may be the operating frequency but the delta value remains the same here so the difference then what is the difference between using low field strength and high field strength spectrometer it is mainly basically for the zooming purpose the difference between using a low field strength spectrometer and high field strength nmr spectrometer lies in the fact that nmr signals are widely separated on a high field strength spectrometer say for example if there are two peaks which are 6 hertz apart on a 600 megahertz instrument that is only 0.1 ppm but the same two peaks will be 30 hertz apart on a 300 megahertz instrument but still the chemical shift value remains one and the same it is 0.1 ppm here it is 0.1 ppm here but what is the difference the difference between the two peaks will be very very high when you use high field strength spectrometer that means even if you take a complex molecule then you can best elucidate the structure of the compound based on the separation of the peaks by using high field strength there are several factors which affect the chemical shift before we go for these factors now we will importantly understand two important terms shielding and deshielding we know that nucleus is there the nucleus will be surrounded by continuously revolving electrons when the electrons are revolving the spin is uh, the nucleus is spinning 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 it creates its own tiny magnetic field now such a tiny magnetic field the spinning nucleus you place it in front of an applied magnetic field if both the magnetic fields oppose each other then the field felt by the nucleus gets diminished and this process is termed as shielded what do you mean by shielded if the external magnetic field is opposed by the local magnetic field then such phenomenon is known as shielded so shielded means the values will be coming towards the TMS. You will have lower chemical shift values. On the other hand, we have another term called deshielding or deshielded. That means instead of opposing, if the external magnetic field reinforces the tiny magnetic field, then there will be augmentation of this magnetic field, and this process is said to be deshielded. What is deshielded? It is exactly the opposite of shielded. Here in deshielding, you will have more chemical shift values compared to the shielded protons. Then which are the factors that affect the chemical shift? There are four important factors which govern the values of chemical shift. They are electronegativity, also called inductive effect, anisotropic effect, Van der Waals deshielding, followed by hydrogen bonding. We have to deal all these in detail one by one. First, we shall take up electronegativity or the inductive effect. So as soon as I say electronegativity, one thing you should understand is whenever a carbon or hydrogen is attached to an electronegative element, then the electrons attached to these will be more driven by the electronegative elements. Hence, a smaller applied field is needed to cause the spin state of the proton to flip. Whenever there is an electronegative element present along with the proton, it requires a smaller applied field for the spin flipping to take place. The signal for a deshielded proton is observed downfield, whereas the signals for protons that are not deshielded, they always appear at the shielded region. We will see by taking different examples. Now, let us take the first case. We know that 
down the periodic table electronegativity decreases among the four halogens considered here chlorine is the most electronegative element iodine is the least electronegative element these chloro and bromo are intermediate now we will take up the example of this fluoromethane in this fluoromethane the protons are very much near to the fluorine we know that fluorine is highly electronegative element and hence look at the delta value of this ch3f it is i in the series it is 4.26 whereas the proton which is near to iodo which is a less electronegative element it will show a delta value of 2.16 that means 4.26 is high 2.16 is it is less so it is these protons are shielded and these protons are de shielded whereas the protons near to chloro and bromo are intermediate to each other so the next in the series after fluorine is chloro the protons near to chloro are 3.1 here you have to observe that 3.1 is lesser than 4.26 and whereas the protons near to bromo are still lesser than the chloro near protons followed by the iodo proton so you what you have to understand here is as the electronegativity decreases chemical shift value also decreases suppose if the protons are attached to other electronegative elements like oxygen nitrogen carbon sulfur etc then we will see how the chemical shift value varies if the protons are near to oxygen we know that oxygen is the most electronegative element in the series so the delta value will be more de shielded the value will be 3.3 whereas if the protons are attached to or near to nitrogen then it will be having less chemical shift value compared to this it is 2.2 if the protons are near to carbon which is least in this series hence it is showing delta value of 0.9 so the order of electronegativity in this series is oxygen being more electronegative followed by nitrogen followed by carbon next the case we will take up is if the electronegative atoms are directly attached to the carbon just so for example we will take this this is methyl chloride or chloromethane here the chloro is attached directly to the carbon and this is having three protons it is showing delta value of 3 suppose if i remove one hydrogen and i put an any alkyl or aryl group immediately the delta value increases here if i replace two hydrogens instead of two hydrogens if i put two r groups the delta value still increases that means to say if the electronegative atoms are directly attached to the carbon then the electronegativity increases next we will take up another example as the number of electronegative atoms increases say for example we will see here there are three chloro groups and hence you can obviously expect that the delta shift will be more now here there are two chloro it is 5.8 there is one chloro so it is only delta 3 so as the number of electronegative atom increases chemical shift value also increases next case is if the halogen is attached to the carbon once removed from the carbon the electronegativity increases we will consider the case here here chloro is attached to this carbon directly and hence the value is 1.5 now what we are doing this chloro is not directly attached to this carbon this was supposed to be our carbon but we have replaced this with another carbon and hence the delta value slightly increase may not be a marginal increase but slight increase will be there and if i increase the r group that means if i increase the distance between the halogen group and again the chemical shift value increases as, as i said there will be an incremental increase in the chemical shift value if the halogen is attached and then removed from the carbon what if there is any unsaturation in the compound definitely the unsaturation leads to de shielding effect we will take the we will take the example of benzene here there are three pi bonds or six pi electrons so the presence of pi bonds the two within a ring definitely will have more chemical shift value it will appear around 6.5 to 7.58 this is followed by vinylic or alkenic here the proton is attached to a double bond it will have values around uh, 5.5 to 6 or 6.5 sometimes followed by acetylenic here there are two pi bonds and one sigma bond followed by an alkyl group so among this series the pi electrons or the hydrogen attached to the benzene ring will show more chemical shift value followed by vinylic or alkenic followed by acetylenic 
and the last one will be the alkyl group. Say for example, when I say alkene, there are two types of alkenic protons. One is terminal alkene, another one is internal al alkene. If the alkene is present as a terminus alkene, then it will show very high delta value. Look at this example. This proton is showing delta value around 5.3, whereas this proton is showing delta value around 4.9. The same case here. Here, this is terminal alkene and this is internal alkene. Terminal alkene will show delta of 6.6, .6, whereas this proton will show delta of 4.9. Compared to these two, this proton is having more delta value, definitely because of the reason that it is having a carbonyl group here, but that carbonyl group is absent here. So obviously you can expect more delta value for this proton. Next, we will take up another example, the case of alpha beta unsaturated compounds. So this is the functional group. This carbon will be alpha, this carbon will be beta. Now the question comes here, there are two protons, HA and HP, which proton will have more value? That is the question now. We know that this undergo keto enol tautomerism or it undergo resonance. This double bond is moved here. So oxygen gets the negative charge and this will be a resonating structure. When that is the case, this beta carbon gets the positive charge and oxygen gets the negative charge. We know that positive charge refers to less electron cloud density. Less electron cloud density means de-shielding. De-shielding means more delta values when compared to the shielded proton. So this proton attached to alpha carbon becomes shielded, whereas the proton attached to beta carbon becomes de-shielded. Hence, Hb will have more chemical shift value compared to HA proton. Having studied all this, now you may be wondering how these values all came into picture. Now we will see what are the chemical shift values that we have to assign for different protons. So far we have seen that chemical shift can be expressed in delta value earlier. These chemical shift values have been expressed in tau also. So how can we change tau to delta? Tau is equal to 10 minus delta. If in some of the textbooks still they refer to for example, John R. Dyer textbook, they still deal with tau values. So don't, no need of panicking. If tau value is given, simply subtract it as 10 minus delta. Now, this is the table which shows how different functional groups or different classes of organic compounds will have different chemical shift values. Now we will Now we will start from this 0 to 12 scale. That is the normal 1HNMR. At 0, we know that there is a TMS peak. So this is called upfield. This is called downfield. This is called shielded. This is called deshielded. If there is any alkyl group, they will have lesser delta values followed by alkenic protons around 3. Then you have proton attached to carbonyl or we say methyl ketones, they will have around 2.5 to 3 range. Then followed by the protons attached to the halogenated carbon, uh, halogenated compounds or electronegative compounds. They will have values around 3 to 4.5. This alkenes or vinylic protons, it will have values starting from 4.5 to 6.5 or 6.8. The aromatics comes in the region 6.8 to 8.5. Aldehydic protons will appear around 9 to 10. And the last carboxylic acids, they are the highly deshielded protons, which appear around 11 to 12. We will see all this in a table now. This is various alkyl groups. If it is the primary, then the value will be 0 0.7 to 1.3. If it is secondary alkyl, 1.2 to 1.4. If it is tertiary alkyl, then it will be 1.4 to 1.7. Here R refers to either hydrogen or alkyl groups. We are referring only to alkyl groups. Then I will be coming for the aryl groups. Then coming to vinylic. Uh, vinylic primary will be having around 1.6 to 2.6. The methyl ketone, 2.1 to 2.5. Then if the protons are attached to esters, RCOOR dash, it will have values from 2.1 to 2.6. If the protons are attached to nitrile group or cyanide group, it will have 2.1 to 3. 
then if the proton is attached directly to the benzene ring say methyl benzene then it will have value around 2.3 to 2.7 if the proton is attached to alkynic alkynic group then it will have 1.7 to 2.7 if it is attached to any nitrogen containing 2.2 to 2.9 if hydrogen is attached to sulfur 2 to 3 if hydrogen is attached to iodo 2 to 4 bromo 2.7 to 4.7 if it is chloro 3.1 to 4.1 then if it is any ether functionality, then it will have value from 3.2 to 3.8. Then uh, direct ester group 3.5 to 4.8. If the proton is attached to nitro containing compound 4.1 to 4.3. If it is attached to fluoro 4.2 to 4.8. If there is any alkenic or vinylic proton, then it is 4.5 to 6.5. If the hydrogen is directly attached to the benzene ring, unsaturation, more unsaturation in the ring, it will have more delta value 6.5 to 8. If it is a aldehyde proton, it is 9 to 10. And if it is uh, a carboxylic acid, it will be 11 to 12. Usually, if the hydrogen is directly attached to nitrogen or oxygen, that is NH or OH peaks, usually they will give very broad peaks because of the relaxation time. We will see now. If it is the thiol function, it is having 1 to 5. If it is an amine, 1 to 5. If it is alcohol, 1 to 5. If it is a phenolic, it is 4 to 7. And if it is an amine proton, then it is 5 to 9. This is how chemical shift value varies for different kinds of protons. Now you will have seen if the proton is attached to just a simple alkyl group, it will have less chemical shift value. On the other hand, if the proton is attached to some unsaturation or electronegative atoms, then they will have the more chemical shift value. These are shielded region. These are deshielded region. Now, we will take an illustration and assign chemical shift value for this compound. First, we will see how many different types of protons are there in this compound. This methyl is first proton, CH2 second. Here, you may be thinking that this is alkene and both will be one and the same. No, this proton is in different environment. This proton is in different environment. They are trans to each other. So we have written it as third and fourth. Whereas these two protons will be five. These two protons will be six. And this methoxy will be seven. So in this compound, there are seven different types of protons. We will see how we can assign chemical shift value for this. So this is a methyl group. This methyl group. It is attached to an again alkyl group. So its value primary methyl, it will be one. Then this CH2, the CH2 you must observe here, it is attached to an allylic group. That's why its value will be around delta two. This is alkenic protons, alkenes. So three and four, they are trans to each other. That means there will be a slight difference in the chemical shift value. Three will show 6.1, whereas four will show 6.2. 5 and 6 are the aromatic regions. Aromatic regions comes to around 6.5 to 8.5. Here, the fifth protons, they will appear around 7.2 because they are near to alkenic region. Whereas the protons attached to the sixth position, say our sixth type of proton, they are also aromatic, no doubt, but they are near to electron releasing methoxy group. And hence, they show less chemical shift value compared to the fifth type of proton. The last one is methoxy, that is ether type. Definitely the delta value will be around four. So we have given here 3.8. Now we will move to the second factor that influences the chemical shift, anisotropic effect. Anisotropy. Isotropy means similar. It will behave same in presence of the magnetic field. Anisotropy. That means it will behave differently in presence of the applied magnetic field. We will see how it happens. So whenever there is an external magnetic field represented by H0 or B0, like your sigma electrons, pi electrons are also induced to circulate. The strength of the magnetic field generated by pi electrons is stronger than the sigma electrons. That always we have to remember. Sigma electrons, whatever the strength it produces, it is less when compared to the strength field, uh, magnetic field produced by the pi electrons. The magnetic field induced by pi electrons are directional, that is unsymmetrical. Whereas, whereas if the protons are circulated, 
by the pi electrons then it will have multi dimensional and hence the name anisotropy is coming this effect can lead to shifts to either higher frequency side or lower frequency side higher frequency side refers to downfield shift paramagnetic shift or higher delta value lower frequency shift is also called by the name upfield shift diamagnetic shift or lower delta values now always we have to remember the effects are paramagnetic in certain directions around pi electrons and diamagnetic in other directions that means whenever there is a pi electron it will behave in different manner when in presence of an applied magnetic field because it is behaving differently it is moving from isotropy the name is given as an isotropic effect we will see how best we can do this now now we will consider the case of different class of organic compounds and we'll see how the anisotropy affect chemical shift value the first class of organic compounds that i would like to discuss now is alkene usually alkenes or vinylic protons it will have delta value from 5 to 6.5 so this is an alkene group c double bond c there are some other alkyl or aryl groups which is immaterial for us now when i place this alkene in front of an applied magnetic field you will see that they are they both are parallel to each other and hence this electrons the pi electrons it will start to revolve around the pi bonds revolve around the double bond when they are revolving two types of magnetic fields are produced one is diamagnetic another one is paramagnetic if the protons is coming in the diamagnetic field that means they are shielded they will have less delta values you see here these protons the alkenic protons are coming in the paramagnetic field and hence they are deshielded it is for this reason they will have the higher delta value of around 5 to 6.5 here the circulating electrons will be perpendicular to the applied magnetic field if the if the applied magnetic field is held like this and the circulating electrons will be perpendicular to the applied magnetic field two types of magnetic fields are produced one is diamagnetic another one is paramagnetic diamagnetic is always shielded region paramagnetic is always deshielded region diamagnetic or shielded region will have lesser delta value whereas no proton is coming in this uh, diamagnetic region or shielded region where the protons are present in the cup shaped cone that is paramagnetic region or deshielded region and hence it will give the more delta value of around 5 to 6.5 next one is carbonyl compound more or less carbonyl compounds behave in a similar manner with that of the alkenes the only difference here is the magnetic field is applied along the axis of the oxygen of the c double bond o here you can see c double bond o so when i induce the external magnetic field the pi electrons they circulate in a similar fashion with that of the alkene here also the circulating electrons will be perpendicular to the applied magnetic field and hence this region becomes diamagnetic or shielding and here there are no protons so no less chemical shift values whereas the aldehyde proton it will fall within this paramagnetic zone or deshielding zone because there will be a reinforcement of the induced field and the tiny magnetic field it is because of this reason carbonyl compounds show high delta values around 9 coming to alkynes you may be surprised to see that alkenes will exhibit more chemical shift value compared to alkynes though alkenes have only two bonds whereas alkynes have got three bonds among them two are pi bonds the reason is this we know that acetylene molecule or an alkyne it will appear or the shape of the alkyne is linear linear we can write both as horizontal as well as vertical if i induce an external magnetic field then the alkenic protons they fall in the paramagnetic field or the deshielding zone and the expected value will be very high delta value whereas that is not the case because when the linear molecule is perpendicular is here in this case it is perpendicular the triple bond and the magnetic field they both are perpendicular to each other here when the applied magnetic field is parallel to the pi electrons the circulating pi electrons then the 
protons, alkenic protons, they come in the diamagnetic region or shielding region and hence the expected value will be 2 to 3 which is very very less when compared to alkenic protons which shows that the chemical shift value around 5.5 to 6.5. The main reason is this, in this fashion whenever they are parallel to each other there will be more tendency for the protons to get shielded rather than de-shielded. Whereas when I orient the alkyne molecule or acetylene molecule in a perpendicular fashion that is triple bonds like this and magnetic field like this then there will be no reinforcement rather than the tiny magnetic field as well as the external magnetic field they will oppose each other and hence the diamagnetic shielding takes place but not the paramagnetic shield this is the reason why alkynes show less delta value compared to alkenes the last one is aromatic compounds the delta value will be usually 6.5 to 8 whenever we say aromatic compound we take the best example of benzene we know that benzene it is the ring structure having rich pi electrons it has got six pi electrons or three pi bonds so above and below the ring there will it create the circulating pi electrons it creates a loop and around the loop what is known as ring current is generated that ring current the protons if it falls in the ring current region then those protons will be shielded but here in the case of benzene the protons which are attached to periphery of the ring they fall within the cup shaped cone the cup shaped cone is always paramagnetic in nature that means they will have de shielding effect and hence the delta value obtained is always i that is around 6.5 to 8 this is how anisotropic effect plays an important role in different classes of organic compounds we will learn how this anisotropic effect affects in different classes of compounds. Let us take a simple alkene here. One proton is trans, another proton is cis. This proton is trans with respect to this methyl, whereas this is cis with respect to the compound. This is ethyl 2, 4 methyl, 3 pentanyl trans to butanoate. And this is ethyl 2, 4 methyl, 3 pentanyl, 6, 2 butanoate. Here, the uh, proton attached to trans, it will exhibit more chemical shift value because this proton is coming in the cup shaped cone because of the anisotropic effect as well as the electronegativity of the carbonyl compound. Because of this, both effects, the hydrogen is coming within the cone. If the hydrogen comes within the cone, definitely it is paramagnetic. Whenever the value is paramagnetic, it will have more chemical shift value. On the other hand, the here, this proton, you can see here, this proton is outside the cup shaped cone and hence the delta will be less compared to the trans proton. We will take another compound here. The ortho proton is having, this is benzaldehyde, ortho protons, which is near to carbonyl group, it experiences paramagnetic shift or paramagnetic field or de-shielding de effect and hence the delta value is more whereas the meta proton which is far away from the carbonyl group it experiences lesser paramagnetic shift and hence the delta value will be slightly lesser compared to the ortho protons here in this case also the same the ortho protons will exhibit more delta value compared to the meta hydrogen we will consider another example, alpha pinin and beta pinin. Here, the alpha pinin, it will exhibit slightly higher chemical shift value compared to the methyl group of the beta pinin. Here, this methyl group, the proton of this methyl group, it comes directly in the loop and hence it will show slight increase in the chemical shift, whereas here it is not so coming inside the cone and hence the delta value will be slightly lesser. These three are the best examples to study how the ring current affects the chemical shift value. This is the case of 10 paracyclopane. Here, the, there are five methyl methylene groups. Here also there are five methylene groups. And as the distance between methylene group and the ring increases, the delta value 
decreases. What is that? The methylene group, which is directly attached to the benzene, it will show delta 2.63. As you move away, the chemical shift value is also decreasing. Another compound, if the methyl proton or any proton, if it is deeply buried or the methyl groups are deep in the shielding zone of ring current here, as I said, the ring current will be above and below the plane of the ring. So it is deep in the shielding zone of ring current and hence it is exhibiting the delta value of minus 4.2. Now we must imagine how, de -shield, how shielded the value is. Another best example is 18 anulin. Here two types of protons are there. These protons are terminal, whereas these are internal protons. These internal protons are present in highly deshielded region and hence it is exhibiting delta value of 8.8, .8, whereas these terminal protons, they are deep buried and hence they are shielded. That's why they are showing delta value of minus 1.6. This examples, it will show how ring current affects the chemical shift values in different aromatic compounds. The third factor that affects the chemical shift is Van der Waals deshielding. Van der Waals force that we have studied in the chemistry class, the same Van der Waals, this type of effect is very much prominent in bulkier molecules like steroids, alkaloids, terpenoids and proteins. Say for example, if the molecule is very, very heavy or if it is rigid or it is overcrowded, then some of the protons may be occupying sterically hindered position. The electron cloud of a bulky group or hindered group, it will always tend to repel the electron surrounding the proton by means of electrostatic repulsion. And hence, such protons are always deshielded and resonance at higher delta values than the expected value. That's why I said this Van der Waals deshielding is not very important in the regular NMR classes. This will be of very high importance in a bulkier molecules like steroids, terpenoids, alkaloids, proteins. Now we will see an example how Van der Waals deshielding affects the protons present in the overcrowded molecules. This is the table that shows shielding contribution. The shielding contribution, it will be negligible if the atoms are separated by more than the sum of their Van der Waals radii, but it is significant for shorter distances. Say for example, if the two protons are separated by 2.4 angstroms, then the shielding value will be just 0.01 ppm. If the distance between the two protons is 2 angstroms, then it is slightly increased 0.2 ppm. Whereas if the distance between the two protons are very, very small, say it is 1.7 angstrom, then look at the shielding, it will become very, very prominent. That's why I said it is significant for the shorter distances. So whenever there is a uh, short distance between the two protons, then the shielding becomes very prominent. And hence I said this Van der Waals deshielding is very important in bulkier molecules. The last factor that affects chemical shift is hydrogen bonding. We know that any bond between hydrogen and an electronegative element is called hydrogen bonding. Usually the proton which is attached to an electronegative element, it will show a downshift value or deshielded value. The downfield shift depends upon the strength of the hydrogen bonding. If the strength of the hydrogen bonding is very, very high, then it will show very large delta shift value the hydrogen bond is weak, then the delta shift value obtained will, will be quite lesser compared to the greater hydrogen bonding strength. The extent of hydrogen bonding depends on the concentration, solvent and temperature. That means if the proton is attached to oxygen, nitrogen or sulfur, then the hydrogen bonding, it will vary based on the electronegativity and also on the concentration, solvent and temperature. We know that there are two types of hydrogen bonding. One is intermolecular, another one is intramolecular. Can we distinguish between inter and intramolecular hydrogen bonding by using NMR spectroscopy, particularly proton NMR spectroscopy? The answer is definitely yes, because we know that intramolecular hydrogen bonding is concentration independent. So this intramolecular hydrogen bonding is concentration independent and hence whatever the dilution you do, the proton resonance will, will be the same. Whereas in intermolecular hydrogen bonding, if you increase the 
or if you decrease the concentration then the bonding becomes very very weak if the bonding becomes weak the delta value also becomes very very less this is the best example this is phenolic proton attached to some ester function now there is hydrogen and there is an electronegative oxygen so there will be a hydrogen bonding be between these two because it is a very very strong hydrogen bonding look at the chemical shift of this oh proton it will be around 10 to 12 ppm just like our carboxylic acid region even after the hydrogen bonding there will be not much difference in the delta value even because it is an intramolecular hydrogen bonding even if you dilute that delta value remains the same as about 10 to 12 ppm whereas in the case of intramolecular that means if there is a difference or uh, the distance between the these two groups increases say this is ortho and uh, this tester group is in para position then it becomes intermolecular when you keep on diluting the hydrogen bond becomes very very weak so instead of 10 to 12 ppm the resonance will be very very less giving very less 